There's a song by, uh, I think it's uh, 50 Cent, who says, Hate it or love it, the underdog's on top. I don't know. Is that underdog sundowns will sit on top of the league, or is it Kaiser Chiefs who's on top right now after getting yet another three points? Scoring, once again, you know, more than a goal a game. Doing fantastic in yesterday's game as far as the result is concerned. 2-0 was the matchup. Sundowns beating Polokwane City 2-0 as well. It is primed and it's just primed to be an awesome game on Saturday. That's what you just heard. Top of the show there. It is um, Mule Fenteki and Rolani Mukwena speaking about the clash on the weekend. It will be live on SABC Sports and SABC 1 this coming weekend. Welcome to it. It's 10 after the hour 6. This is Sports That Amplified with Andy Le I am Andy Le Ngube. Welcome to what is going to be a great show on a Thursday. We park the banter of football. We park the conversations about current affairs and what's going on in the world of football. Because on a Thursday, we tell stories. We tell amazing stories of people. It's your favorite show of the week. We call it Throwback Thursday on Sports That Amplified with Andy Le on the Mighty Metro FM. Last week, we told a remarkable story, or rather two weeks ago, we told a remarkable story of the retired soccer jerseys of Kaza Chiefs, two of them. 20 and 15. We spoke to the two players that at their jerseys. They have one thing in common. Both of them doctors. Dr. Kumalo and Dr. Howard Fries. They were on the show. Tonight we'll tell yet another story. A story of a giant. A giant whose shoulders till today many of us stand on. Sports broadcasters very finest. When it comes to broadcasting in this game, it doesn't come any finer than our guest. South Africa. And uh, I can tell you now, I guess tonight is the reason that some of us, myself included, sit where they sit. Thank you so much to all of those joining us on Facebook Live right now. I see you and thank you. appreciate you watching the show as well. Um, a big wave there. You can see from us that our guest is with us. You, you can see there all of those that are watching. Uh, a person who is an explorer, somebody who went to ahead, you know, where the bombs were going off and nobody wanted to go there. She went ahead and said, okay, let me go see. Let me be the one that they send out. Let me be the rabbit before the dogs follow in. She went and she put herself through that. A pioneer, really. Ladies and gentlemen, how I described her when I was asked about it, I said, when I started watching sport on TV, I'd seen men. I'd seen lots of men. International, because remember, back early in the days, uh, South Africa had the English Premier League on SABC. We had uh, uh, the Italian League as well on SABC. It was, it was men, mostly white men. And then later on, you started seeing a couple of black men. But never had I seen a woman until the one day I switched on my television, growing up in La Monte, you know, and boom, I saw a woman on TV doing sport. And she did her introduction and said, her name was Cynthia Chaka. I said, Cynthia, no, it's not a pretty guy. Because, you know, <laughs> you might have been bamboozled to thinking, no, it's just a pretty guy. Like, oh, that guy's real pretty. <laughs> Cynthia, Andy, welcome. You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my truth. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I don't remember anybody before you. Well, um, for African females, yes, there was not anybody before me. But there were white females before me. I remember Alma Nettling. Um They were there, um, but unfortunately for us as black people, we had not had that opportunity to be able to show our passion in sport and to talk about something that we are passionate about and be paid to talk to about it, something yeah. that we love and we're passionate about. Remember, I'm a former athlete myself. Um, so I guess because I was an athlete, I was then able to transcend from from the field onto behind the mic. And um, as you said, it was not an easy transition, but through the grace of God, we made it. Did you know when it was happening, once you were on and you were doing it, that no black woman had ever done this before you? You were the first. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. Because remember, whatever I do, I always just follow my passion. Yeah. I always just as they, you young people say today, I stay in my lane. So I was never competing <laughs> with anybody. I was not looking out to be the first or to make history. What I was looking out to do was to make sure that women are represented mm. and that I do the best that I can. And then God will carry me from there on. And But I knew that it was a difficult um, 
sector and industry that I was coming into because even in print media at the time, there wasn't yeah. a lot of female black print sure. journalists. I mean, that took even longer, if I remember correctly, before I could see a first. It, it wasn't easy. It, it wasn't easy, um, but there were, there were few um, who did work for print media but obviously they were not given the the back page, which is our front page. Mm. You know, so when I say the front page, I really mean the back page. Yeah, because that's the sports, sports front, front page, page. Yeah. So um, they were not given that, but they they were, and 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 they did try to do their best. How do you even get onto television? It is a crazy story. It's really a crazy story. So um, when I was looking for a job in Cape Town, just matriculated, um, somebody said to me because I was also a a model. Believe it or not. Believe I was, it. <laughs> I was a, a catalog model. So we doing the shooting and then this lady says, oh, you know what? They're opening a new TV station, Starnet Television in Cape Town at the waterfront. I said, oh, really? Oh, OK. I'm going to go and look for a job there because I just finished my trick and I didn't have money to carry on with my studies. Story of all, all of, of us most, black people. Yeah, a lot of black people at and, the time. And yeah, so I went in and I said, I'm here. And then they said, uh, I remember your Aunt Blanche said, so what can you do? I said, nothing, but I'm willing to learn. And then he said, okay, do you have a driver's license? I said, no, but if you give me this job, I promise you I'll bring you a driver's license within two weeks. And that's how I started in television. I started working for Standard Television just as a runner. Standard Television? Standard, yeah. Okay. Yeah. As a runner, you know, just doing production. Then I went up to be assistant director, you know, for drama series. Wow. You know, um, at that time I was doing a karate, as I say. And um, Smusi Somakasela, who was a super sport pro executive producer at the time, had seen me uh, compete. What year is this? This was uh, 1994, 1995. Okay, so Supersport is fairly new. Yes. So he's seen, um, not, not, not Supersport, I mean SABC. SABC Sport, because yes, yes, I'm like, yes, hey, SABC man. Sport, I'm sorry. Isn't I'm sorry. that much later? SABC, SABC Sport. Sport yeah. No, you've worked for all of them, so it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, so, so SABC Sport, yeah, yes. So he had come to Cape Town. It was the South African National Karate All-Stars Championships. So he had seen me win, beating a black belt, and I was a brown belt at the time. And he took up to me, he says, you know, what are you doing? I said, no, this is what I'm doing. And then, as God had it, I was then headhunted by the then SABC One um, uh, TV. Was for, it was, for was the it TV? What is it? TV One, TV Two? TV One, TV, TV one. one. Yeah, Bongani Bingwa was actually my my presenter. He was a little, you oh, know. Wow. Yes, he was my presenter because I was working as a coordinator. So then Smusiso Makasela sees me at the corridors of SABC working, and then he says to me, "No, no, 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 no. You have to come and present sport." And that's how I got to be presenting sport, having been a sport person, having been an athlete, and then I was presenting sport. So that's how it happened. Wow. Yeah. So it was being at the right time, at the right place, right at the right time. time at the, really. Yes, because also at that time there was um, um, a, a music program that I was presenting. Mm. So they would fly me weekly from Cape Town to come to Johannesburg. Um, this program was presented by Bob Mabena before me at Tim Modise. It was on Friday. What was it called? Um, ZD. <laughs> I think it was called ZD, some music program. Ah, dance school, yeah. I know. I'm sorry, you were not even born. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about Tim Mardise. I, I mean, remember. I, I, mean, I know, I know them then, well, yeah. Yeah, uh, Melanie Bala. Not Studio Mix? Well, yes, but before it was called Studio Mix. Oh, there was another name before it? Yes. No, so I came in during Studio did, Mix yeah. era. So I did that. Even the Zandi Lenzalos, they were here at the time at the wow. SABC. And then Esposito says, there's no way you are going to be presenting music. When you are an athlete. So we have a very similar journey, you and I, because I started in music as well before oh, really? before coming into sport. Yes, yes. For that Friday night slot. Exactly. That's yeah. what happened to me. So he says, he says, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah. it's not going to happen. You are going to present sport. And that's how I started to present sport, because I already knew and loved sport. And that's 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 my story about how I became to be a sport presenter. Not just a sports SBC. presenter, a pioneer, the first black woman to be on television speaking about sport. What difficulties does that come with? Does it come with difficulties and challenges at all? It does. It does. I remember um, when the um, Wimbledon was on SABC 3 at the time, and it was the creme de la creme. 
uh, program. If you were a presenter broadcasting Wimbledon at the time, you had made it. So I remember, you know, they wanted to put me on Wimbledon to present tennis and I couldn't crack the the Russian names. And that was a decider that I'm not going to do it because I could not pronounce the Russian names. Mm. I mean, what is that? What is that? So just because, and meanwhile, the same white producers could not present, uh, pronounce our names, Zitulele Singh. They battled to pronounce Zitulele Singh, but they didn't see anything wrong with them disqualifying me because I could not pronounce the, the Russian names. But I was fine with it because I went on to do basketball, things that I love. I'm like, okay, if you don't want me to do tennis, I'll stick with basketball and any other sport where I'm not going to be judged by my pronunciation, but by how I well I know the sport and how I can communicate so that people can be interested in what I'm talking about. So it's really been a rich history and um, I'm very proud because a lot of women used to stop me in the street and some of them, they, st- they say, Cynthia, we started watching sport because of you. Because mm. before people saw me on TV, especially women as well, they would not sit and watch football. They would not sit and watch any kind of sport. But when they saw me, they thought, oh, wow, wait a minute. Now I can sit with my husband. Made it okay, yeah. Now I can sit with my boyfriend. Now I can sit with other male friends of mine to actually watch sport because I know Cynthia Chaka is going to come through and talk about sport. And I was very fortunate, Andile, because I got to present all sports. I call myself an all-rounder in sport broadcasting because I did not just focus on soccer or rugby or cricket or boxing or athletics or swimming. I did them all. And for me, it was hard but I did get to learn all those sporting codes. And I did get to have my favorites. And I did get to do those that I did because it was a job. Mm. But overall, I really, really, really enjoy um, sport broadcasting. SABC and being around. gives you the break. You yeah. are, you know, like paint on the wall here. When people come here, Cynthia Chaka, I mean, there's still pictures in the building of you. I know. Um, because you're that sort of person. I see your picture every day on my way to studio. I see you. There you are, very young as Cynthia at the time, but you left this building. Yeah. yeah. Greener pastures, you'd outgrown it, better offer? I would say, yes, it was time. It was time. I'm the kind of person who does not want to do the same thing forever. Mm. I, I, I get bored. I want to try something new. I'm always trying to teach myself and upgrade myself and develop myself. So it came to a point where, yes, I enjoyed um, being at the SABC. I enjoyed working at the SABC. I enjoyed the money and the perks of traveling overseas and doing all the wonderful things that SABC afforded me through SABC. But there was a time where actually I could not go to church. Um, and my faith is a big part of my life. Yeah. And I remember every morning on Sunday, I will have my, my a heavy heart. I'd be like, oh, I've got to go to work. Work became a drag. On Sundays on especially. Sundays, yeah. And remember, at that time at ACBC, you couldn't choose. You couldn't say, no, I don't want to go on Sundays. If you if you dad said, I don't work on Sundays, they will take you off completely. So Mm. I did not have a choice to say, can I work on Saturdays and any other day of the week, but not work on Sundays? So it became, I became heavy hearted because I could not go to church. I would leave um, uh, the studio at six and zoom and rush to church um, because there was a church I was attending that started at six, but it was not an ideal situation because I wanted to wake up, relax, be in tune, you know, start thinking about my life and my day and then go and worship and then come back, then get ready to go to work. So that's what happened. So after 20 10 football. I left SABC 2011 in March. You know the story when they don't renew our contracts. Mm. Come come March, everybody, we start shaking because you don't know, am I going to have a job on the 1st of April? So when they did not renew my contract, I was like, okay, this is what I've been wanting. But obviously, I was not going to go to the office and say, listen, I don't want to work anymore. So they did not renew my contract. And then I went and I studied. But that's kind of also, I mean, yes, we say it all blasé now, Cynthia. We say it now like, okay, but I can imagine at the time. You'd been in this building how many years when that happens? Yeah, I've been 22 years. 22 years yeah. and you get a, yeah. you know what, thank you, goodbye. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, 
Sometimes in life, Andile, I've realized that if you think about something long enough, it happens. So remember, every Sunday, I would have a heavy heart and not want to come to work. Hmm. So when God gives you what you've asked for, he also gives you the other stuff that you didn't ask for. Jesus. That's how life is. So now I understand because the, the mind, which is so powerful, and the universe and the spirit, which is so powerful, because you are dwelling in that one thing, the universe thinks that's what you want. So mm. it brings that to you. So it says, so your universe and your mind's work was, she hates going to that place. Look at her on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So let's take that away exactly, from her. Exactly, exactly. So, so it was like, okay, God, thank you. Wow. So what am I going to do now? You know, it speaks to, and I read a book, um, I just, for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. And I, I will, I will try and tweet it for everybody that's out there that speaks about the specification of prayer. Mm. Uh, of, of, of if, if it's, whether it's prayer, whatever your, your mantra is in prayer, to say, be very specific in what you ask for. Don't say, may I please, I want, I need a car and pray for a car. You're going to get the oldest rag of a car you've ever seen <laughs> that'll end up parked with no wheels at exactly. your house. You know, be specific in what you asked for. You weren't specific in what you asked for no. at the time. No. You asked for Sundays and you got the whole week. I got the whole week, yeah. I got the whole week, basically. But then I said, okay, you've given me the whole week. All right, let me study then. Let me study. So I really just took a break. I studied, I did MC jobs here and there. I did. The tough life, because now that's that, that's that freelancing life. That's that waiting for the phone to ring life. Not for me. I was quite fortunate because I'm, um, I'm frugal. I'm very frugal. I don't spend my money. Okay. So I, I keep for tomorrow. Yeah. So I was, I was comfortable for three years because oh, wow. I do not live a luxurious life. Yeah. Um, I live a very simple, basic life. That's mm. me. Um, so I was comfortable studying and just sort of like distressing, if I can call it that way. Because remember, at one point in this building, it was very toxic for us. It was very toxic for us. Um, don't want to talk about that. It's just a history that we have. And I mean, you saw people going to the press. You know, I mean, there was also so some... What do you mean? Actually, this is... And it's a key learning because we have such great management at the, t at the moment. Yeah. And I think it's always important that even they are able to hear from a person who was here during that era mm. in order not to repeat those mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and for those that went out there and read and wrote stuff, what was real and what wasn't? What was toxic for you guys then and what wasn't? What, what, if you're saying it was toxic to be here, to do the thing that I love became also the one thing that suffocated me. Yeah. Okay, so let me give you a scenario. So come contract time, my time. Um, I'll send you the picture of this newspaper because I still kept it. And we are about to wait to be called to negotiate. Then the next thing, Sunday World comes out. She's got an old face for TV. That's me. She's so this out. is... This is yeah. before so you even negotiated. Somebody had lit that I'm not going to, my contract is not going to be renewed. And before I could even negotiate, it was out in the press. And that was the reasoning they'd given? Well, I don't know because funny enough, that particular year, I was given the contract. So what happened is there was somebody who was working with the media. So before you knew what was being said about you in the offices, you it's saw it in the Sunday tabloids, genius. you know. Um, I mean, Miriam McKeever was still alive then, and they said, what are they talking about, Cynthia? Why are they saying you're old? There were people, okay, may God rest his, uh, him in peace, Dumile Mateza mm. was one of the oldest faces. They said, but look at Dumile. Dumile is there. He's much younger. I mean, older So once than again, you. Was, it was a different standard because you were yes, a woman. Yes. So for women, there was definitely different standards. But for men, you could be in the... I mean, Martin Locke. I worked yeah. with Martin Locke. How old was Martin Locke when I started? You probably found Martin here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now when it's me, and I remember at that time, I think I was about 33, 35. And they were already saying my face is old for TV. So... I can tell you now, this industry is not kind to that age at that time, which I'm hoping is a changing thing And now. to women. To women this in particular. This industry is not, is not kind to women because as women, we are expected to look a certain way, to dress a certain way, so that we can have eyes on the screen and then might not be necessarily listening to what I'm saying. They're looking at me. Maybe I'm showing a cleavage or maybe I'm showing a leg. Did but you ever then, feel like you needed to do that? Not me. You know me. I mean, I walked around this building and people thought they're like, 
She walks around as if she owns the building. And then I said, yeah, of course, my father owns the building. Nobody's going to fire me. I even said this to Soli um, Muketle, I Muketle, think. yeah, the yeah, boss at, at the time. At the time. You know, because he was also showing me some type of, you know, when you see him now, you must bow and whatever. I'm like, and the colleagues are like, Sinta. I'm like, what, guys? I greeted him. I respected him. I'm not scared of being fired. What did, it, what did it do to you, though? Because, and I've been in that situation where on a Saturday night you're driving and there are those polls for the headlines that are coming in the <laughs> newspaper tomorrow and you see your name attached to things. And what did it do to you to have a headline like that about yourself? Look, it did hurt me, but then I just remembered who I am. And obviously I had anxiety until I had the negotiations. And when I did get the contract for another year, because that's what they used to do to us, you just you, you would have a contract for a year. So you, you are in bliss for nine months, and then the rest of the three months you have anxiety, you, you, you're worried, you don't know if you're going to have a job, and you can't even buy a car or a house or any kind of commitment because you do not know if you'll be able to pay your bills. But for me, fortunately for me, I always said, God, this is a job that you've given me for this time and when it's time for you to take me to somewhere else you would do it and you will provide for me wherever you're taking me mm. so as much as it did hurt me as much as i did worry as much as it did concern me and of course my family my mom i was like you know what it will be well it will be well and it has been well i mean we're talking about it now and we're smiling it's just part of the history and as you said, uh, you've got a new management and they are kind to you guys. We thank God for that. And I mean, communication sure. has always been the key that, that had been missing over the years. And, mm. you know, we've got uh, a very good management at the, at, at the moment. And I, I hope I speak for everyone, but I certainly speak for myself who, you know, are, are able to communicate, are mm. able to say, hey, Andil, this is what's going on. Uh, way ahead of time. Mm. This is what we're thinking. And, and, and uh, you know, I think the key learnings have been there from that time. Yeah. But your support through all of this because yeah we see you and we think hey she's the first black woman sabc sport has done it here mm. absolutely amazing in the same way that they're empowering Abu Vusi and Abu do me now and mm. the list is long carol yeah. um lebu romi who've all come through this building Mpo, have all Kaz. walked through this building kaz who is the most amazing yeah. uh, i can ever reach of think yeah. of who's your support system because i hear your relationship with your mom who raised you with great difficulty mm was your stone yeah i'm just gonna get emotional because my mom passed away and i actually she passed away in 2007 and I'm sorry to hear it and i actually went through a deep depression for like 10 years where i was very lost and um I did not know whether, because you know, with us black people especially, you think when you're taking care of your mom, the day she passes, you'll be fine because you've been taking care of her. You don't really get to appreciate the support that she gives you um, of her being there for you. So I really struggled for um, a good 10 years and um, I actually wanted to kill myself because I just could not bear being here because she was really my support, my rock, you know. Um, and because she she taught me God, I was able to to find myself again, you know. I mean, I remember actually even talking to God and saying, there's a scripture that says, uh, it's Jeremiah 29. It says, um, the plans that I have for you are to prosper you. Mm. I remember saying to God, this is not it. How can you be prospering me when you take the rug beneath my feet? The only person that I know, no matter what, whatever tabloids that are written about me, whatever people are saying about me, I know that you will want to hear the truth for me and you would not judge me. You will listen and you will believe me and you'll stand in my corner. If I'm wrong, you'll say, no, in Tomzonke, you were wrong here. And if I'm right, you'll stand with me. And she's done that many times, even family conflicts. Um, so when that happened, um, I was I was lost because for years, my mom was a domestic worker and my mom had a, a not a good relationship with her own mother. And because of me, she was always being chased away from the house because I was a tomboy. I used to beat up my uncle. <laughs> I used to beat up my uncle. And my grandmother would say to my mom, 
take lo mtana wako niyambe, mtana wako tetu, mtana wam. So my mom used to go up and down with me and, and ask me to stay with friends when she's working in as a domestic worker and I was I could see her maybe on Thursdays or Sundays mm. when they are off so she was really really a, a strong support and somebody who taught me that I can do and be anything that I want to be so she's been my support and my family and my friends I've got very few friends but um, through all of it and you know I'm, I'm standing and um, and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm doing good I'm doing but good here's what I know for sure because I do know that once you started working you know you were able to take care of her you were yes. able to say mama your sacrifices also been the kitchens of Andes Ngabazi take care of where Nango yes I was so she was able, able to, to see that she was able to live a little bit I mean would love for her to still be here but she was yeah. able to at least live some of that she was she was Andile and I mean shame she even said to me eh, Zonke the day I die in Danam, even if even if you put me in the box of tomato uh, uh, tomatoes and just drop me I'm fine because you've showed me the love when I'm still alive. I mean, a, one of the cars that I still have now, the Mercedes, it's a Mercedes I had bought for her um, in, in, in 2006, uh, June 2006, and she left us in 2007, mm. uh, January. So I decided I will keep that car because for me, it's a symbol of the connection to my mom. And whenever I drive that car, which I drive that car every day, I always also just sort of like, say Zato are you around you know and just as I pray to go to work and um, I just talk to her because I believe she drove that car even if it was just for six months seven months she drove the car and her spirit is in that car so yeah um, I, I was able to show her my appreciation and to give her a good life you know because um, after she worked as a domestic um, a worker then we were trying to get a house and she had to go into a squatter camp where she lost her job because um, we we stayed in, in a, sh it's not shacks, it's like plastic bags, makeshifts mm. because, you know, the, 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 the people at the time, they claimed this piece of land in Cape Town and then they said, we're going to stay here until you build us homes. That's how Kailicha was 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 brought Not about, born. actually, mm. because of my mom and a few ANC people who decided we're going to sit here and up stay until. up until. And then we were taken, so we would stay in this makeshift plastic bags. So at night, I would come from school sleep there in the morning we'll be sleeping around four or five in the morning and then the the police will come kick the kick the shacks you know kick the shacks and kick everything and i would be without a house i'll be standing there in my in my pjs and shaking i'm about to go to school so my mom then lost her job because if she would leave when she comes back they've taken all her belongings Gula plastic. Gula plastic. So all she can't move in, from it. And, and they've thrown it away, you know. So she can't move. She's got to stay and look after her, her belongings. So she lost her job. And then when I was able to work, I said to her, for all the sacrifice that you made for me to be able to have a roof over my head, even if it was whatever a one Whatever roof that was. Whatever roof that was, I will make the sure. Pagum. Exactly. And I will make sure that you say thank to God. Because, you know, sometimes us as young people we don't take care of our parents once we've made it we live in these beautiful homes and drive these beautiful cars go on holidays and forget about our parents and forget about where we come from that's not black tax there is black tax black tax is when your family that never done anything for you and your extended family that never done anything for you and now they see that you've made it they want something from you that's black tax 100%. but taking care of your mom and your father and your sisters uh, so it's not black tax. It's All what that is, supposed to is do. you're putting back into the Thank kitty you. that raised you to Thank raise you. others. Thank you. Remember that. Let's take a quick break. When we come back on the other side, we're still sitting with a hero of mine and somebody I have so much respect for her and her story because even in the story she tells about what it used to be like in this building, it's not like that right now because of people like her. Right, it's uh, 18.45 on the Mighty Metro FM. Uh, please do send us your voice notes if you will. Um, you know, the time was Monia is a Thursday, man, and uh, many of you complain about getting a shot and uh, call in. So 60 uh, I, I want you to listen to something. Uh, 
Malcolm, uh, give me the first one. Uh, I, I want to. I wanted to know what um, what it is that she, she she needs to hear here, Mom Cynthia. Mom Cynthia, have a listen to this for me because there's a lot of people out there who feel how I feel about you. Have a listen. Hello, Andile. Hey, Cynthia. It's so wonderful to hear both of you chatting about Cynthia and her amazing journey. I've said this before, and I think it's worth repeating. Myself and many others would not be where we are in the industry if it wasn't for Cynthia. When I made my debut on the Cricket World Cup in 2003, she was the only woman that was around at the time. And being the big on-air personality that she was, already then, um, you'd assume that she would not even see me. And let me tell you, she didn't just see me, she taught me so much in those early years about how to hold my own in a male-dominated world. And it's amazing to come full circle with Cynthia now uh, as a former Special Recognition Award winner on the Momentum G-Sport Award stage, but also as a judge on our judging panel, mostly though as a friend and someone um, that I see as a mentor and a living legend. Uh, you deserve your flowers and I'm so glad Andile is giving it to you tonight. Class Naidu, Aww. founder of the Momentum G-Sports Awards. We're going to be speaking about them in just a few, but she's not the only one. More people wanted to say something. Um, there was a lot, mostly colleagues and industry giants, but I chose these ones. Have a listen. Hey, Zongo Wongo, my smallest mother. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for everything that you have done for me, um, all the sacrifices that you have made for me. Um, you know, without you, I would not be where I am today. Um, all the support that you've given me throughout the years, I mean, sending me to the best schools, you know, giving me the best education, just giving me the best life that any son could ask for, you know. Um, and you're not just an inspiration to me, but you're an inspiration to, you know, thousands of women out there, millions of women out there. Um, the families that you've helped, donated money to, like, it's just incredible what you've done for the world. And I'm just really glad that Metro FM are taking the time to actually just surprise you and to appreciate you and to just give you that, you know, acknowledgement um, that you deserve. Um, I love you. I will see you soon and have a great day. Who is that? It's my son. He's not even here. I haven't seen him since February. He's overseas. He's trying his luck overseas because he says he couldn't make it in South Africa. It's my son, Nahum. He's named after the book of Nahum in the Bible. So he loves name, you his, so much. His, his name means comfort. His name after Prophet Nahum in the Bible. He loves do you so much. Do you read much. the Bible? I do. I know the Bible pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, so you know the book of Nahum. I do. Yeah. He's yeah. not the only one. Here, here, here's another one that uh, I'd like for you to hear. Because I think us in the industry, with Cass and myself, well represented in telling you, but just like you did for your mom. I think you need, and we want to know, the same relationship that you have now. Have a listen. Hey, mother, mother, my smallest mother. <laughs> well, I guess the jig is up now. Uh, yeah, so I've always known back. about the interview <laughs> and everything else. And I just wanted to take this time to say thank you so much for everything you've ever done for me. You are such an amazing person and an incredible mother. You are the best mother anyone can ever hope to have. Um, you are you are the people's presenter. You are the people's princess. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves you. Your kindness and your kindness and support means so much to those around you. You are and always will be an inspiration to me and many other young people. You are a beacon of lights you are the sunshine of my life and many other lives as well we all love and appreciate you more than you can ever know and um thank you so much to uncle simi for involving me in your surprise and mm -hmm. making your day special i love you mother mother thank you bye that's yam tanda my daughter see we are so. And the way they speak of you makes sense because it's almost like you took from your mom and what she did for you in pouring out into them. Mm, mm. I've always, I always say to them, you know, my mom made it easy to be a mother, but guys, it's difficult. 
I, I always tell them, <laughs> I'm like, I'm putting my life on hold for you guys because the thing is, what has always been my worry is that my mom died at age 54. Mm. She was only 54. So I've always said, I want to make sure that I do everything that I can for them because I do not know if I have tomorrow. What if I also die at age 54? So I want to put them first because I know that God through SABC and the other work that I've done, I've been able to really have a good life. So I wanted to give them a good life to make sure that if I do go early in life, at least people are not going to say, what did your mother do for you? Where were you? You mm. know, what did she do? So yeah, I've always put them first, but I tell them it's difficult to be a mom because you've got to be um, selfless. You really have to self to be selfless. Difficult question because I struggle to answer this. If we're to play a reel of your career, the almost three decades, yeah, yeah. of your career, yeah. what's the first thing I'll see? What's the for you when you think this is the apex of my life and my television career? What is that? Which moment is that? What do I look for? If I say to an eighteen-year-old now who wasn't there, who hasn't seen the Cynthia Chaka magic. And I say, this is Cynthia. What is this? First of all, it will be my interactions at the stadium when uh, soccer was playing at FNB Stadium, especially interacting with the fans. Soccer fans are awesome people. I love them. They will stop me and will interact that one. Secondly, interacting with the, with the runners in the Comrades Marathon mm. and the Two Oceans Marathon, I always say, I could never do that. But whenever I interact with them, any human interaction for me in sport was amazing. Being part of the presenter team that went to Greece to present the Olympic Games, that was the highlight of my life. Being the only person to interview Lennox Lewis, mm. Andy Le, that was Awesome, simply because he was brought here, brought here by Supersport and other people, and he did not even give them an interview. He gave me an interview because wow. I camped out where he was staying. I was there every day. Even old Jeff in this building used to, and they even played that interview twice at the SABC. It was such a scoop for us. So that was a highlight for me because he did not sit down with anybody. He sat down with me. And of course, presenting when we got the World Cup. First, when we lost it, that was horrible. Mm. You know, I was splashed all over the world and in the Africa soccer um, magazine because really those were the hopes of South Africa and Africa hosting the World Cup in 2006. But then when we got it in 2010, then I, I was asked to go to Zurich to broadcast there to say we got the World Cup. Wow. And that was one of the highlights of my life. But really, everything SABC has made me who I am. You know, um, the journey of my life would never be complete without being here at the SABC. So even the difficulties that we went through, the, the most important thing is that at the end of the day, we still focused on what we came here to do and we were still professionals and we did what we came here to do. So, so it, it was really a lovely journey. Before, you know, I, keep, I see you keep looking at the time. A, a colleague of mine <laughs> said, because otherwise I will not have a job tomorrow. A colleague of mine, um, a, a Kathy Shulubana says, oh, please say hi to my crush. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's just so many people who also are admiring you, oh, you no, know, it's, and it's they are listening to you and, and you are loved out there. Between yourself and Kaz, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the two of you. So Kez it's just amazing. pouring back into the same pot so that there's more for others. Lastly, what is Cynthia doing now? We're going to speak about the G Sports Awards in okay. just a few. Okay. But what is Cynthia doing now? Are you still on TV? Are you on radio somewhere? Where is Cynthia now? Cynthia is somewhere doing something that she also loves, playing okay. back to the community okay. in, a, in a great way. Um, working for a wonderful, awesome executive. Um, uh, and I'm loving what I'm doing. Um, it's years of studying um, that now God has given me this opportunity to, to prove my studies. I have got a communications degree. 
I've got honors in gender studies. I've got um, BA in international relations and BA in public administration. So with all those qualifications, I pray to God to give me a job where I can use those qualifications and the amount of years of experience that I have in the different fields where I've worked with. So that's where I am right now, um, uh, applying my mind and really enjoying it. I can't say thank you enough. We wanted to shut um, this uh, Women's Month down. Uh, you know, I don't think it should ever shut down, but we wanted to make sure that we end it uh, in the best way that we can. And we couldn't think of anything bigger than you. And alongside Cass and I do in the Momentum G Sports Awards, yeah. um, we're able to come up with this. Uh, every Women's Month, you know, they do these amazing awards. We collaborate with them to do these amazing interviews and to give these flowers to people like yourself. You were a judge there. What are you yes. guys doing uh, at the awards? Well, um, today it is the last uh, public voting. It closes. So if you are still thinking of nominating Andile as the <laughs> woman of the year, <laughs> <laughs> if he is uh, in the finalist, please go ahead and make sure you do that. And uh, just to remind people that the awards will be on the 12th of September and they will be on Supersport. We will give all the details later, but it's really been an amazing journey, and I'm so grateful to Kaz to really include me in the Momentum G Sport Awards because now I get to relieve um, my love, my first passion, which is sport, and I get to be a part of positive um, movement that honors women in sport. And I do hope, Andile, that soon South Africa will also follow suit like other countries and make sure that women footballers are getting equal pay as men footballers. I mean, what Spain is doing, making sure that even the bonuses of women will be, I mean, of men will be, women will be equal to men. I guess Safa needs to get to that point. Dares has done an amazing mm -hmm. job from where they were. And I just want to say I thank Sasol and Miss Nolita Fagude in particular, talking about women who believed in women. Miss Nolita Fagude, who was the vice president of Sasol at the time, decided that no matter what happens, I will make sure Sasol plows money back to Banyana Banyana when nobody was backing Banyana Banyana. Even you know, some mm. former Banyana Banyana saying they will never go anywhere. And Des and the team, when they won the Africa Cup of Nations, people suddenly were quiet. All of a sudden, you saw people now all of a sudden coming to back Banyana Banyana. Now they are top 16 in the world. The fact that they made to the 16, it means a lot. So I really hope wow. that we can push for Banyana Banyana to get equal pay. Play it. We need to. Some people wanted to say stuff, but we got con you know carried away in our conversation. Malcolm, very quickly before Faith comes in. Hi, Andy. I'm happy to have the legend which you have in the studio and the way how she she narrated her story and it's wonderful and it's so amazing that she got a, that courageous and you see the the period which she gave to her employee that within two weeks she would do this and that that's amazing story and the big up for the show thanks andile andile the show um was called was a weekend was <laughs> <laughs> with prophets, yes, I and remember. Good evening, there. How and do you forget? Some listeners uh, worldwide, you know, you're hosting the legend there in Cynthia Chaka. She reminds me of uh, the likes of Mpoli Tsolonyan, Nji Kumalo, Carol Chabalala, and now Busisiwe Ngobo. She's doing a very good job. She have done. She have done it all. Keep it up. Keep it up. The good work, Cynthia. Thank you, we love you as South African. We pray for you every day. It's Moses Mokwena. I, I could not begin to say thank you. I could not begin to close this off. But I want you to know that um, every day I'm on the radio is just another alter ego of yourself. Every time we're on television, it's just continuing what you've started. Thank you for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andal. You're so kind. Thank you. We've got to get out of here. An hour well spent. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. From myself and my entire team, including the lights, camera, action guys, and Timmy. Olapar, Joe. Pella, pella. And so me.